Theodore J. Flicker. You have to take a step back if you're dealing with Theodore J. Flicker. I never found out what the J was, didn't care. I don't know what the J stands for either. He owned a theater in New York. It was the first truly improvisational theater in New York. He created the hit TV show Barney Miller. Barney, it's your wife. <laughs> Ask her to call back, will you? Could you call back later, Elizabeth? And was a Hollywood director. Nobody had done political satire in this country for 30 years. We were relentless about expressing our opinions. I would suggest that we set fire to his establishment, but unfortunately, the whole district is a fire trap. They used to call me the kingmaker. Shortly after I told anybody to go f themselves, they were on the cover of Time magazine and the new head of the studio. People were lining up to insult me. He had a very, very hard time dealing with the establishment for a long time. A troublemaker. He made a movie that got him into trouble with J. Edgar Hoover and the FBI. For putting me on. Uh -uh. The President of the United States. The L.A. office of the FBI got a copy of the script. We didn't send it to him. The heavy in the script was the director of the FBI. Hoover was not happy. The shit hit the fan. If it made Mr. Hoover look bad, they would automatically have a reaction that, hey, well, you really don't want to do this, you know, that type of thing. And they would have gone to a lot of lengths to, to, to halt it. It was a very avant-garde film that all came true. Watergate, all that stuff. I say he don't get the job till he improves his morals. The head of the FBI was played by an actor named Walter Burke, who was a very diminutive guy who was uh, used, he played a lot of uh, gunsels and um, acolytes to evil villains and stuff like that. And um, he played the part, part totally straight. He was perfect casting. He's very, very short. Bobby Cock. I was at a party. Jimmy Coburn was there. And so he came over to me and said, hey man, you got anything? I said, yeah, I just finished a script. I said, you want to read it? He said, I'll read it tomorrow, send it over. And I sent it over and he called me that afternoon. And he said, man, let's do it. James Corbin was a hot star in the 1960s. At that time, he had the power to get a movie made. I ran into Jim one day at Paramount. I said, what's up? He said, oh, we're gonna do this movie, The President's Analyst. I said, well, I want to do it. He said, well, I'll introduce you to Ted Flicker. I'll introduce you to the director that was nameless at the time. So I met Ted and I showed him something I was doing and he said, the Flicker Manor, you got it. Paramount Pictures wanted to break away from the traditional Hollywood style movies. They reached out to young writers and directors who were in tune with the changing times. Hal Ashby, Roman Polanski, Haskell Wexler, Francis Ford Coppola, and Theodore J. Flicker all had innovative films green-lighted by the new Paramount. I've been told so often that the President's Analyst is kind of a time capsule of the 60s. The 60s were a crazy, uh, mixed-up time. You can sleep in my bed. This picture was different. Perhaps we might alter the course of history. People were just getting out there, free. <laughs> it was before its time. When it was released, the film's reviews and box office were good. But a few weeks later, it suddenly disappeared from the theaters. Rather well, a complicated security problem. Flickr's film faded into obscurity, and he could not get work. Things got very tough. I lost my house. Oh, it was my time in Siberia. My agent stopped calling me. It was really scary to think that the government didn't like a movie. I mean, why did they care? I picked on the wrong guy by accident, you know? It wasn't so much the loss of income, that was killing Ted. It was the loss of the ability to keep on being creative that was really the toughest thing for him. When it's happening, it is very uncomfortable. 
how, no matter how many times you say, oh, it doesn't matter what they think of me, it matters. If you alienate the wrong people, uh, they, they fix it so you don't work. My orders are to kill you. Ted could have created a body of work that would have been absolutely amazing, but he could not suffer fools. And God knows Hollywood was filled with fools. I suppose some arrogant self-destruction uh, that I was involved in, but it worked because I self-destructed. Take that, you hostile son of a... Watch your step. Flickr's Film has independent film project sponsorship. The IFP is a non-profit organization that helps independent filmmakers. Tax-deductible donations can be sent to IFP Flickr, 68 J Street, Suite 425, Brooklyn, New York, 11201.